Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Emmanuel, for those of you who don't know. And uh, today, we're going to be working on the last major component of our network service. In the last video, we were able to make a request and then get a response, a JSON response. So in this video, what we want to do is whenever we get the response, we want to directly decode that data or uh, yeah, decode that into a Swift object that our system is going to be familiar with. All right. So uh, let's, let's jump right in. And if you haven't subscribed, take a second, click on the subscribe button and like the video because I'm sure you're going to love this. All right. So the first thing we want to do is we want to create a new struct, which we're going to call API response. Now, this is going to be the structure of data that we're going to be getting from the back end. Now, if you remember from uh, the sample or the request we got in the last video, we saw a status, we saw the um, uh, the data and uh, the, the message, I think. So we're going to be creating a structure that's going to be called API response. All right. And because we want this to decode, just go ahead and make this conform to the codable. And again, if you wanted to, if you were thinking of having this to also encode, then you could also have, or just simply use codable, because this is the combination of both the decodable and the encodable, all right? So I'm just gonna be using the decodable because that's all we're gonna be doing here. Now, the first thing we know that our data, our response has, is the status. Now the status is of type int. So we have uh, status codes like 100, 200, 200 like success, 201, 400, 500, you know, all of these numbers, they are integers, right? There's no 500.2 or something. So uh, we have the status. The next thing we have is the message. So this is when, uh, and this is actually of type string. And you can go ahead and make this optional just in case there is no message in the back. And I actually like to do this just to be 100% sure that it's not going to crash because the data type is, um, or the data wasn't passed into the response. All right. So uh, this message is going to be used to tell us, um, let's say we, we uh, create something, then the success message is going to be here so that we can display the message from the back end rather than having to type our own success message within the app. Now, the next thing we're going to have is error, or let's do data first. So data is very interesting because we're going to be having different types of data, right? It could be a string. It could be an integer. It could be a custom type of maybe order in our example or a dish, you know? So um, this, we're going to be using a T to represent our generics. Again, you can't escape this. So um, you're just going to specify the T. And of course, T is going to be optional because we don't know whether or not it's going to be passed in. And you remember, whenever we, we do this type of thing, the system doesn't know what T means. So what we need to do here is specify what T is. So I'm going to say T is of type decodable or encodable, whatever you want to say. So this just simply means that T is going to be dynamic as long as we can decode JSON into that particular structure. All right. Now, the last thing we're going to have is error, which is going to be an optional string. So in case there's an error from the back end, then this value is going to be populated automatically. Now, this is our general API response structure. And the beauty about this is uh, you can, the network service in general, is you can actually just copy all of this code that I'm writing over here, and you can use it in multiple projects. Everything remains the same. Now, now the only thing you're, you're probably going to do is to improve on the, um, maybe the performance or uh, maybe make it a little bit more robust. So let's say, for example, you want to have like timeouts, right? So you don't want your, your request to just continuously roll. You want it to time out of the particular time. So you can, of course, set that in your um, network service where you have, where we're generating our URL request, right? So there are many other things that you can do, but overall, this is a pretty solid architecture or pretty solid um, design 
that you can use in multiple projects. Right? So now we have our API response. What we're going to do is we're going to head over to our network service. And the next thing here that we want to do is we want to implement the next function that is going to help us extract or rather decode the um, data into our custom type. Okay, so I'm going to do that right under our request function. All right, so what we're going to be doing over here, we're going to create a private function. Do I know how to spell private? So we're going to be creating a private function, which I'm going to call handle response. All right, now um, this function is going to take two parameters, just two. The first one is going to be the result that we generated in our last video. So the result is of type, let's just because I'm extremely lazy, I'm going to paste that right there. And then the second parameter is going to be our completion, which is, of course, where you're at, my friend. I'm going to copy this like that. And we're going to paste that over here. Okay, move this to the next line. So the first one is the results. So this result has whether or not it is, it tells us whether or not there is an error or there is um, actual data. So, and then the completion is us trying to return the decoded data into the exact structure that was um, initially specified, all right? So um, right here, we're gonna need to specify what T is, and we know that T is anything that is decodable, all right? Perfect, so now the first thing we wanna do is we wanna check if there is a result. So we're gonna say um, guard results, let's remember, equals results else so um, at this point there ain't no results so what we're gonna do is we're gonna call our completion and our completion is gonna tell our UI that look I don't know what happened so we're gonna say app error dot um, unknown error all right now if there is a result what we want to do is want to use a switch and say switch result okay and now what this is gonna do is it's gonna ask us to implement two things, the success and the failure. Now for the success, at this point, we have our data. And for the failure, at this point, we have our error. Now in order to quickly implement the error part, we're gonna be doing the same thing. So we're gonna say completion.failure and uh, we're gonna pass in the error over there. Now. For the part of the success, so at this point, we know that we have data. I remember the data may have error or the actual data that we want. But how do we know? We have to do the actual decoding. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say um, at this point, I'm going to say let um, decoder be equal to JSON decoder. All right. Now I'm going to do a guard and say um, let our response. So this is going to be our decoded response is going to be equal to try and we're going to say uh, decoder dot decode what did I write dot decode from and the type we're going to do here or we're going to use here is we're going to just say t because t is the uh, not t actually but we're trying to decode using our API response structure so we have to specify API response and then inside of our API response, we have a generic type, right? So the T. So we're going to need to specify T, which is whatever is going to be our decodable type in this case. All right. So uh, I'm just going to put that over here. And then we're going to need to specify self. Now, uh, let me just quickly explain this again. Now, you know, in our whenever we receive a response, we have the, the status, we have the success. Let's quickly just go there. So we have all of these things, but within all of these, so all of these have like defined types, right? But this one does not. So the data can be different, right? It can be a string, it can be a um, dish or an order, whatever. So um, since this is different, we we're specifying that there's a generic type within the structure. So that's what we're doing over here. We're saying that we want to decode to this, but then there's something we want to pass in an extra type that you're going to use to decode whatever is within that particular um, 
structure all right I, I hope it makes sense but we're gonna see it work all right so now for the data so you can see over here that we have data right here you can just see the type so we pass in data just like that and since you're using a guard you're gonna have an else so at this point if we get an error it means that the decoding was not successful so I'm gonna just do a failure and say um, error as uh, app error dot uh, decode error decoding so um, yeah so this is going to return error decoding as the error message so if we didn't get that it means that the response was successful so now did it decode with an error or did it decode with actual data that's what we're going to check now so we're going to say if let error equals response dot error then at this point it means that there was actually um, an error in our um, response so what we're going to do is we're going to say completion again dot failure nope what am i thinking and for this part we're going to specify an app error so it's expecting an error object so i'm going to say app error and this is going to be a server error and i think i should have used a better name server error is like 500 but I'm just going to pass in the error, which is of type string, as you see over here. Perfect. Let's get rid of this. Now, um, now that it's done, we can actually just go ahead and add a return just so it doesn't spill. Or we can use an else if, if you will. All right. So, uh, but what I'm going to do over here is now I want to check. So uh, if there's an error, it goes. But I want to check if there's actually data there. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say if let data equals um, response dot data. And actually, let me use something uh, quite different. Uh, let's say decoded data, right? And um, yep. So if there is a decoded data, then we want to do something. Otherwise, then maybe we want to say that um, there's no data or a known or whatever. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say completion dot, uh, why don't we say completion dot, so failure, and here I'm going to say app error dot, and let's say, for example, uh, maybe you can say unknown, or you can say error decoding, right? Whatever you choose. So, um, yeah, if there's no actual data, or we could actually even create a new one and say there's no data. You know. So um, when we're done, um, now we have access to our decoded data and you can see that is of type T. So whatever the user is expecting when you were calling the function is going to decode to that particular type. So what we want to do is we want to say completion and this time we're going to say success, finally success and is expecting a decodable. So what do we do? Just pass in decoded data. So this is our um, handle response function. And I guess this is doing a pretty good job. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, you know, have to connect that over here. So to do that, we're going to call self dot handle response and handle response expects the results. We have that lucky. And for the completion is going to be the exact same type as was passed in here. So I'm going to pass in completion and let's see if everything is okay. Uh, any complaints? No complaints. Awesome. So that is pretty good. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this program again. And this time I expect that it fails. Let's see what we're missing. Um, escape enclosure. Yeah. So we're going to need to make this. Uh, where's the completion? I'm going to make this escape. So just add at an escaping over here. Let's copy that. We're gonna need to do it somewhere else. Let's see, build please. Um, is that okay? All right. So anyhow, um, let's go ahead and run this. So um, I'm gonna add a a um, completion over here in this function, just so that we can check the data from another place. So at the point where this particular function is called. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to specify a type that I want to, that I want to get. So I'm going to say, um, I want to get a, uh, how do I say this? So I'm going to say add escaping over here 
and uh, what am I doing? Completion. And this, I want to get a result. And for the result, I want to get a string and an error if there is an error. All right? Yep. OK. Now, rather than having like an empty brace over here, I want to directly call our completion. So this is simply saying um, make the request, call the, uh, make the request, and um, I want my response to be decoded into string. All right, and if you actually look at this, you see that we really didn't need to specify a type over here, right? So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the type from over here because I didn't see us using the type over here. So uh, we used the direct um, we we used the direct data that was passed in our completion. So our completion type here is string. So it's going to decode directly to the string. So if we wanted to decode directly to an integer, then we'd be calling the function and passing an integer, integer over here. So we don't exactly need to specify an extra parameter for the type. All right, I hope that makes sense. So now let's head back into our home controller. And what we're going to do here, uh, so th this is going to be quite different. So my first request now has a completion. All right, that's executed when the response is um, retrieved and decoded. So here I'm going to say results and in order to get the data I'm just going to add a switch. I was switching the results so case first is going to be success and you can see automatically it already specified the type of data that we're going to be receiving when we do the um, what's it called? When we get the response right? And the second parameter we're going to have here is the failures and again error. So here, just say let error, and we're going to print the error is. This is going to give us error dot localized description. Awesome. And for this one, we're going to say data and print the decoded data is data. Now, if we run this program, can you guess what the output is going to be? Okay, let's run it and see. Okay, so as you can see over here, uh, we got the response and we got the pretty good response. But right here it said response could not be decoded. And the thing is, we're trying to decode this data as a string. So if you look at the function over here, we specify that this is going to be of type string, when in fact, when we look at the data, this is the data um, uh, object over here, this is in fact not a string, right? So um, this returned the error. So if we wanted to change this, what we're going to need to do is to pass in the actual type that matches this particular data structure. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to check for the existing one that we have. And if we look over here, we have a dish, right? So we have a dish format that looks pretty good. So what I'm going to do very quickly just for us to test that it works is I'm going to make this decodable. All right. So making it decodable means that um, we can directly decode from our JSON data into this particular Swift structure. All right. So now that we have this, remember this doesn't match the type, but I'm going to make a change to our temp request and I'm going to be pointing to a different route that returns a list of dishes. All right. And this is simply um, slash dishes slash the category number. So I'm going to return one. I think this works. Remember, this is just like temporary. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this one more time just to be sure that it returns an actual data. And don't worry about how I'm getting this um, thing. Maybe, maybe, maybe sometime I may make a video uh, just showing what the backend does. But um, this is like you connecting to a backend. So the backend is going to you're going to you're going to be giving a particular route to call, and then it gives you a response. 
So uh, this doesn't work. He says the response is this uh, error cannot be decoded. So I guess I passed in a bad route. So I think it's actually dishes. Okay, so I was able to confirm that the category is actually cat one or cat two, I think. So um, yeah, I'm gonna make the request one more time and I expect this to fail, but I just wanna see that I get some actual data in our array, okay? So um, let's see, let's see what we get. All right, perfect. So now we see that we get actual data. So let's see what this data actually looks like. So data is an array of dish. So this is our dish object that has ID and the name and the description. So what I will do then is I'm going to go over because if you look over at the bottom, we're going to see that the coding still failed. So I'm going to head over to our network service. And what I'm going to do in fact here is I'm going to change this to an array of dish. So our results should be an array of dish. Now let's run it one more time. And if uh, let's see if we still see this error or it actually decodes. Fingers crossed. Ooh, didn't even give me time to cross my fingers. So this thing didn't work. Yeah, so it said um, necroservice requires that dish conform to encodable. So let's head over to dish. And how do we fix that? Oh, okay, so because I specify that it has to be encodable, so I'm gonna have to say encodable. Or I change our requests. Where's the requests? And the request. Here, I just change this to decodable. All right, I think that's better since I'm not um, encoding it. So now let's run it again. And hopefully everything should work pretty smoothly. Now you can cross your fingers. And uh, if you're finding whatever value in what I'm doing over here, then please take a second and hit the subscribe button. And uh, if you've enjoyed it, then please also hit the thumbs up so that other people can know that the um, tutorial actually makes sense. And all the more reason why you should do it, it actually worked. Awesome. So um, let's let's come over here. Now this is our JSON, right? This is our JSON data. And if you look over here, it says the decoded data is. And now things are a little bit different. It isn't like our JSON, but instead this is an array of yummy.dish, meaning this is our particular data structure. And if you see the ID is item and everything properly decoded. Now, if you wanted to see it, uh, let's say wanted to get all of the names um, easily. So what we would do is uh, let's go to where we made the call, which is our home view controller. At this point, what I could do is just say um, for um, dish in data, and I'm gonna say print um, dish dot name. All right, and I just put a default of an empty string. And I'm also going to remove that um, print statement right here, just because it's loading up our. So just commented that out. So let's run it again, and this time we should see a simple list of all the dishes that are returned for this particular category. And this is the beauty of decoding. So you don't have to manually map um, objects or values. You it just does it for you and. You enjoy it. So the network call uh, will soon be made. It's been made. And we can see all of our dishes, the name, and we can do whatever we want. We can populate this in our table view. In our case, you're going to see how everything is going to tie together. So in the next video, we will actually start connecting our backend with our UI. And we're going to be using this awesome network service that we've created. And this is simply, this is just how easy it's going to be for us from uh, wherever we want to make the call. We just use our shared instance. We do this and um, we just populate our UI. So in case you don't want to wait for it when I release the next video, then you can try this on your own. And I'd be really impressed if you can get it working without um, my help. All right. So um, until then, Stay blessed and see you guys in the next video. Yeah.